we talk a lot about nature versus nurture, I think, in this show. And just to frame it for context, you know, I think I like to purposely sort of overgeneralize two buckets of people that I kind of imagine who are watching and listening right now. One is they're young people, right? Teenagers coming out of high school or maybe coming out of college and they're thinking, what am I going to do with my life? And then you have a whole other bucket of people who are maybe mid-career or even middle age in this great resignation that's happening right now in 2022 who have a chance to reset, reboot, or maybe they're unhappy with where they're at and um, they're thinking, man, is this really where I want to be for the next 30 years? And so nature nurture, you know, quality of life, all these things I think are top of mind in people. So it's, it's interesting for me to hear your mindset. And uh, so would you, would you put yourself in like that left brain or right brain category or maybe a hybrid of both? Well, I'm 100% hybrid of both, right? And, and, but, but you gotta understand, what's, what's the, you know, what's the purpose of the right and left brain, right? Like, well, one's all, I'm gonna be creative, right? The other's gonna be analytical and make sure this works, right? And, and the truth is, there's a third one in my mind, um, because it's art, science, and magic, right? Mm -hmm. Because the combination, you've got to create your future. Right. If you whatever you want to do, what you're experiencing today is based off of what you decided to do in the past that that led you here. Right. So if you want to change and and create any future that you want to, you have to be um, as creative as you can and get as clear as you can to look out into the future, which I think I got really good at at a young age. But the difference was, you know, you then have to have a believable path to get there. Right. That's where the science and the right, right brain kicks in, where like you've got to like really know that there's like a path for you to actually uh, achieve what it is you you want to achieve rather than hoping you achieve it. Right. Right. Because you just don't really gain any you don't. If you dwell on why you don't have something, you're going nowhere. And if you hope and wish you get something, you're going nowhere, right? So that, that for me is just one of those things. I used to say I had a gift of execution because I would be, I would just decide, put a flag in the ground of what I was gonna do. And then I would fight for it and learn and evolve and grow and evolve and fail and evolve and, and, until I finally learned it enough to get to it and achieve it, right? And I think, again, where does that come from? I don't know. It, but it, it was a gift that was instilled in me that when I saw it work once, I believed I could do it again. And then I just continued to do it over and over at bigger and bigger scales, having that foundation of belief that I built at an early age. Yeah. You know that movie, Rudy? Mm -hmm. you ever seen, that's like one of my favorite movies because I think there's a line in it somewhere that says, you can't teach heart. Yeah. And, and that's what... Rudy, who's actually a real life dude, yeah. uh, that's what he had. He, he didn't unfortunately have much talent, yeah. uh, but he tried to make up for it with effort and heart. And I think that's kind of what you're talking about. Yeah, is look, at, the end of the, at the end of the day, that's where I go back to believable. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you can, you can max what's possible physically and, and universally as Rudy did. But at the end of the day, you, you, it's no different than uh, you know, getting to Mount Everest and climbing it like fluke first try, right? Like, yeah. and never being a climber. It's still the reality of you still have to, uh, even with all the heart in the world, you still gotta be in a, a, a clear reality of what's actually possible, you know? What, what advice would you give then to people you know who are trying to make it happen um, there's this idea that you should like kind of what you're talking about you, you discovered this ability that you had sort of innate you know God given to be good at something that you tried so should you pursue the stuff that you're good at and then you can become great at and then try to monetize that or um, should you try and do what you love because sometimes there's a disconnect, right? Like starving artist is a term for a reason because you might love art, but you could suck at it, yeah. right? You could be a great accountant, but it could s suck the soul out of you yeah. and you never love what you do. Like you're making great money, you're amazing at counting stuff, but like you just hate it with all your, you know, everything you've got. So what is your advice on like the path? Well, well number one, if you're an accountant and, you're, and you hate it, you made a bad life decision. Yeah, but you're great at it. Like you're like the best. It doesn't matter. Right. Like it's what's the what's the purpose of being great at something if it doesn't give you energy? Right. Right. And and at the end of the day, it's like, 
um, if you're an artist, but your ambition and your identity that you see for yourself is living in a mansion and spending a million dollars a year and driving a Ferrari, like um, you are going to be tortured for the end of days, right? Because you're, when you think about your life, it's, it's your body, it's your mind, it's your financial stability, it's your career, it's the people in your life, and then it's the things that are fun and adventurous that you love to do. All, all these make up your life, and all of them give and take energy, right? Yeah. That's essentially your whole life. And so if you choose a career that, that you're good at and it's the easiest path forward, but you hate it, um, it's okay. If, if you can compartmentalize that and you work nine to five and it serves the financial needs and you now have it inside your system that and now you can automate it and make it so effortless that it takes so little of your energy and you've already uh, dedicated that amount of time that you can now swing that energy over to now painting and playing guitar on the weekends and every, every evening and you live this balanced happy life, right? Yeah. It's how, how you design those six core systems of your life will ultimately dictate the quality of life that you have. Because at the end of the day, the quality of your energy is directly correlated to the quality of your life. You know, and, and every person, I don't care who you are, what your passion is, what you think you love, what, what, you know, whether you want money or you wanna help the world or create a company, whatever it is, at the end of the day, we just want a high quality life. We want to be around people that we love. We want to be uh, doing things each day that give us energy that don't draw from us. And life mastery is when you can live an entire life day in and day out where you understand everything that gives and takes energy from you. And you've created harmony in those and integrated those systems to create a high quality life. You know. I mean, we were just sitting back, you know, <laughs> chopping it up, reminiscing about the good old days and all that, <laughs> you know, tracking my roots, where I came from and where I'm going. But like I say, man, always said it. It's not about the destination.